another in my series of books on movies, and these are classic movie memoirs from male actors and, well, other people involved with Hollywood. So let me tell you about three of these. Let's go. This video is for those who both read and listen to books, and I think you can do that with all three of these selections. These three are just a selection of the greats, and here's the first one. It is the autobiography of Charlie Chaplin. Probably just about every one of you knows Charlie Chaplin. If you don't, go check him out, go read about him. I've got a couple of videos on my channel about him. And even if you don't like Chaplin and silent movies in this period of time, I still think you will really enjoy this book because he is an absolutely interesting, fascinating person, a really interesting thinker, good with words, he's terse and funny. And you know what makes a great story is substance matter, not just the way an artist or author puts the work together, but if you don't have substance, don't have much. And Chaplin, he could have been a terrible writer and still done well here because his story, his life story is really amazing. As you may know, he goes from being a pauper in England, basically the son of a poor actor and actress, and they're barely making it. They're living a Charles Dickens-like existence. He describes that in the first 80 to 90 pages. And at one point, it made me gasp. His father is dead, and then his mother goes mad or crazy. She's put into a sane asylum, and he's left at 12 years old to fend for himself. But if you know the outcome to a story, you know that when he's 12, about 12 years later, he will become one of the most famous and richest people in the world and will continue to be for the next several decades. So that it goes from pauperdom to being the most rich and famous person in the world. And Chaplin interacted with just about everybody that was famous in the United States and England and in, even in Europe in the first half of the 20th century. If you've heard the names, you know them. H.G. Wells, Albert Einstein, William Randolph Hearst. He meets presidents, he meets kings. He knows actors and actresses, his best buddies, Douglas Fairbanks. The list goes on and he's not gonna do a tell-all here, which I really appreciate. And he says why he's not gonna do tell-alls. I think he's a really, really interesting person. I think if you took 100 of us, 100 people read his book, you'd have 100 different interpretations of him, but you will get to know him and you will find him a fascinating person, no doubt about it. He's had a fascinating life, from pauperdom to lifestyles of rich and famous, and then to be kicked out of the United States, more or less, all the trials, the literal you know, juridical trials he went through in his life, later in his life, why he made his movies. You know, I get a couple of insights from his book. I never really thought about this. I should have, that Modern Times, probably my favorite movie of his, is actually partly about him. I don't think, he doesn't say this in the book, but it's partly about him and losing the silent movie era and going into the sound era in film when things become quote unquote more mechanical. And Modern Times is in a way about the sound era and the new sound era in film in the 1930s. I think you can glean dozens, hundreds of insights from this. It's got really interesting info in the first half of the 20th century and a man who was thoughtful, charming, philosophical, reflective, obtuse, maybe annoying. I mean, all kinds of great things about Chaplin. I didn't like him that much before this book. Quite honestly, I like Keaton and Lloyd better as silent movie comedians. I have respect for Orson Welles and the, the list goes on. But now I think I like Charlie Chaplin a lot better just because I kind of got to know him in his autobiography. The next one I'll just describe briefly is Robert Evans's The Kid Stays in the Picture. Now the book I'm referring to, you could read it, but I really like the audio book, which I think is actually read by Robert Evans himself, who has a classic, <laughs> memorable, deep, dark, gravelly voice, which is really worth hearing. So get the audio book if you can. This book is of course about Evans, who is an actor, and then he becomes a studio executive, when in the 1960s and 70s, he's the head of Paramount Pictures. Here you get the executive side of things, whereas Chaplin was the actor side of things, although Evans has a perspective of an actor, but you do know the movies he was heavily involved with, some of which have dated now, but others like Rosemary's Baby, Italian Job, Harold and Maude is great, but then the, it gives the inside scoop on The Godfather, The Conversation, Chinatown, those late 1960s, early 1970s movies that are still famous that Paramount Pictures made Made. And he, you know, he took Paramount and he made it a big, you know, it was a failing movie studio, I think, and he made it a big revival of it. 
and he'll tell you why and how he interacted with artists and directors and everything else. This is great from a producer's perspective to see what it's like to be in Hollywood with a goofy sense of humor, but also very he's a very sentimental guy as well. The third book I'm recommending here, I can't believe I've even, I'm even doing this because I probably should say someone who is really famous, someone who is world famous, everybody knows this person, someone who is very super interesting because they have a great life story like Charlie Chaplin. But the third book I'm highly highly recommending maybe above the other two is norm mcdonald the stand-up comedian is based on a true story subtitled not a memoir i recommend listening to this book too and that's strange for me because i've probably read a hundred times more books than i've listened to as audiobooks but this audiobook is narrated by norm mcdonald and it has a well he's got a ghostwriter in the book and that ghostwriter is ghosted by another person you probably know from saturday night live the american sketch comedy tv show now if you have no clue who norm mcdonald is this may not be as easy to understand as a person like me who grew up in the 1990s and i know norm mcdonald from saturday night live from a couple movies and from being a stand-up comedian. But I don't think that matters because this work is incredibly inventive. It's not a memoir as it says, but it's not fiction either. It's kind of a blend of both fiction and memoir. Norm takes his own life and tells stories about it, but then completely makes up stuff. It's like a Wild West tales that you're sitting around with Norm MacDonald around the campfire and he's embellishing on his life to the point of absurdity and you know he's telling lies but you know some of it's true and then you get confused because you're not sure which is what and the structure of this book is fantastic the introduction of alternate voices like the ghost rider there's actually a plot in the book and it develops as it goes on even though norm is telling piecemeal stories of his life how he became a stand-up comedian how you know how he grew up how he got to Saturday Night Live, how he made a movie called Dirty Work Comedy. And yet there's a plot running through it with characters who I am not still sure because I didn't look it up whether they're real or not. <laughs> this is postmodernism or post postmodernism. It's so inventive and creative. I'm just telling you as a literature professor, this is a work of literature. Norm MacDonald's memoir or not a memoir. And I will be re reading it or listening to it forever i will do this two or three more times i will read it listen to it because it's so enjoyable and entertaining now i've approached this video from a literary perspective what's well, very well written very well crafted very well thought through a good use of words and language interesting stories and i've not picked out you know the most famous people in the world so i'm wondering have you read any memoirs and which memoirs would you choose both in terms of just great stories great lives interesting people but also very well written very well crafted very well thought through and those people who can write on their own i'm not talking about people like memoirs that are ghost written i think chaplin wrote his own he didn't he dictated it perhaps but it's his own voice norm mcdonald definitely wrote his own memoir here so if you've got something that's not ghost written but comes from an original voice of the person themselves that's what interests me let us know in the comments and i just stuck to males here only males we'll get to the females perhaps in another video later thank you for watching please subscribe to this channel for more great content have a great day